Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to undergroundwellness.com. Today, we're gonna stick with our brain health topic, and I'm gonna show you how blood sugar problems can cause some major issues with your brain. Now, there's two primary blood sugar issues. You've got hypoglycemia, and you've got hyperglycemia. Hypoglycemia means that your blood sugar is too low. Hyperglycemia means that your blood sugar is too high. And when you've got too high blood sugar, that can lead to prediabetes and eventually to full-blown diabetes, and of course, nobody wants that. Now, you can have both. You can have hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia going on at the same time but today for the sake of brevity because I know when my videos get too long you guys don't want to watch them I'm just gonna focus on hyperglycemia when blood sugar is too high now how do you know if you're hyperglycemic well you eat a meal and you feel fatigued and tired afterward or after eating that meal you feel like you crave sweets and sugar and even if you do go ahead and cave in and have sweets and sugar you don't find that your craving is satisfied you're hungry all the time you have an inability to lose weight your waist circumference is greater than your hips and you find that you you tend to pee all of the time for some reason and so those are some telltale signs that you've got hyperglycemia going on now if you're hyperglycemic you can better believe that you've got Got some insulin resistance going on as well. Now there's many contributing factors to insulin resistance, but today I want to focus on poor diet. Too much sugar, too much starch, too much carbohydrate or bad carbohydrate in the diet. You see, your body only wants your blood sugar to like be like, you know, in a particular range. It doesn't want it to be too high, of course, and it doesn't want it to be too low, and you already know that. And so what it does is when you consume a carbohydrate, let's say you had cereal for breakfast or a bagel, or you had like a, a sandwich with a lot of bread for lunch, what your body does is it breaks down that carbohydrate and turns it into glucose or blood sugar. So your blood sugar level is going to go up and takes it out of that good, healthy range range. And so what your pancreas does is it's going to shoot out something called insulin. Now you've got cells, right? And your cells want that glucose. It wants that blood sugar. It wants to use that for energy, but it has to get inside. Now on those cells is something called a receptor. All right, so the, the, the cap to my pen we'll call the insulin receptor. And the pancreas shoots out this insulin and the insulin comes out, binds onto the receptor and we'll say that this cell opens up and it starts to suck the sugar in. So it takes the sugar out of the bloodstream and puts it into the cell so it can use it for energy. That's the way that it's supposed to work. That's how we normalize blood sugar when we eat healthy carbohydrates and we don't eat the bad stuff too often. But what if we're eating these bad carbohydrates all of the time? What happens is we're constantly inundating that receptor with insulin all the time, every day. And over time, that insulin receptor, it becomes um, resistant to the effect of insulin. So for example, insulin comes and knocks on the door, but the cell says, hey, I am not opening. I want nothing to do with you. So your body says, hey, high blood sugar levels. This isn't a really good thing. We have to bring these blood sugar levels down. So what it creates is an insulin surge. And so now you've got all of this insulin trying to do the same job that just a little bit of insulin would have done before. That's insulin resistance. Let's take it to the board. Now what happens here? Blood sugar is too high insulin surges are being produced throughout the day. Now these two things can cause inflammation to the brain as well as the body. Remember, when you've got inflammation going on in the brain, you've got degeneration of the brain. Those brain cells are starting to die and now you've got symptoms and stuff going on that we talked about in the last video. And also on top of that, let's consider body fat. If you're eating a processed, refined diet with too many carbs and your insulin levels are up all the time, remember, insulin is your primary fat storing hormone, we'll call it. Your body fat isn't just inert, it produces stuff. And one of the things that it produces is inflammatory cytokines inflammatory, meaning that they cause inflammation. So that's going to create even more inflammation to the brain and to the body, more degeneration to the brain and to the brain cells. On top of that, blood sugar and insulin, when they are out of whack, can create dysfunction in the systems that are supposed to keep the brain and the body cool, the hormonal system the gut, the digestive system, the thyroid, the adrenals, when these are dysfunctioning, you're gonna get more inflammation in the brain and in the body. And last but not least, 
When you're producing insulin surges, what happens is it reduces the brain's ability to clear out amyloid plaque. Amyloid plaque in the brain has been associated with Alzheimer's. So when you can't clear it out, you increase your chances for Alzheimer's. So these are the reasons why we need to eat real food, jerf as we call it, just eat real food, follow a paleo real food diet to keep our blood sugar in check, to save our bodies and to save our brains. If you want more information about that, of course, as I said yesterday, you can check out the book, Why Is It My Brain Working by Dr. Tatis Karasian. Really good book. You guys will find like, you know, good dietary tips as well as, it's probably gonna take a really long video for me to cover these, so I encourage you to read the book, as well as like nutritional compounds like chromium, alpha lipoic acid, which will help you to control your blood sugar as well as your insulin. I'm out of here. I will see you tomorrow with more information about your brain. Peace.